What's up you guys? This is Devin with Century Effects Studios TV back with another video and today we're going to be talking about a user comment that was left on one of my videos talking about how grateful they were for the video but also that they had got the 7D Mark I and the 7D Mark I was something that they were going to stay with and just amplify their lenses. So I'm going to elaborate on this and I just wanted to make a video about it. I just got the message not too long ago. Basically, yes, the 7D is an amazing camera. It does great things, especially for its time. It's a little longer than tooth now. So the dynamic range might not be there. I mentioned that in the video. So there's a couple of things that they won't, it won't last up to the weathering heights of a dual pixel autofocus R5 or the top of the line Canon camera today. But if you're not using video, if you're just doing sports pictures and you have enough light, go ahead and use the 7D Mark I. Make sure you get good lenses. Get good lenses before you, and like you said in the comment that you said you were going to go ahead and get lenses instead of upgrading the camera body. Go ahead and get those great lenses because those great lenses can be transferred to another Canon body down the line. And this is not just for Canon, you can do this for Nikon. If you have an older Nikon D500, the D500 was a really exceptionally great Nikon at the time, it was a crop frame sensor. Even if you have a great body, if you're cropping to get to 400 millimeters, if you're cropping to get to 300 millimeters, if you're cropping to get to 200 millimeters, that's gonna wildly degrade your image quality and you're doing sports, chances are, because you're using a 7D or D500 from Nikon. Now these are old used cameras, probably under $400 right now. I don't know exactly about the D500 because it was a very popular camera, but it was a little bit newer than the 7D Mark I at the time. But these are advanced autofocus systems for its time. These were advanced high frame rate cameras as far as eight frames a second. There's not even a lot of cameras even to this day that do eight frames a second. So, Yes, there are mirrorless cameras that can do a lot of things with the electronic shutter, like 20 frames a second. Yes, and there's quite a few of them. But the mechanical shutter gives you an advantage that the electronic shutter doesn't give you when you're shooting sports and when you're shooting in low light, fast action situations where you're at those higher shutter speeds because electronic shutters, um, they band. They, they show banding, especially in the higher ISO values and stuff like that. So it's a good idea if you're a new photographer, just stay with older cameras like the 7D Mark I and understand that the DSLR will give you an easier time. You don't have to worry about complicated menu systems. You don't have to worry about all these other things that we have to worry about when it comes to the higher megapixel, newer mirrorless cameras. If you're doing sports and you're shooting with a mirrorless camera today, you can be banding from all the LED or LCD or whatever kind of screens that they have going on. If you don't realize that, if you don't realize these flaws, then you're gonna be screwing yourself over thinking that you got an upgrade and you don't know that the electronic shutter, even though it's faster, 20 frames a second, 30 frames a second, 40 frames a second, that it's gonna shoot you in the foot if you don't understand that it bands, it bands in low light situations. And this banding, and sometimes these banding will not come out of the image, especially with the Sony a7R II with those high megapixel mirrorless bodies that had low, slow readout speeds. It can't read the image fast enough. So when you're using the 7D Mark I, you don't have to necessarily worry about that. So the 7D Mark I for me, if I were to use the 7D Mark I today, I would use the 7D Mark I for maybe crash cam. Using it for a crash cam, an underwater camera, something that's niche putting the camera in a, a really compromising position to get a camera angle that I've never gotten before. And see, a lot of people are doing that nowadays. It's putting cameras in unique situations like action cams and GoPros and putting them on drones and putting them underwater and stuff like that. Well, I don't want to put an R5 underwater. I don't want to put an R6 underwater because these are relatively new cameras. They're more expensive. Paying them off, doing all this other stuff is, you don't want to put them near water. Maybe if I were shooting something like a photo shoot inside of a room and, and, or inside a studio like this, those cameras would do well in water because I could cover it up. But if I was shooting underwater, I would use the 7D Mark I all day. CF card, slide that CF card in my camera, bang, 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 shoot raw, 18 megapixels, full um, crop frame goodness. Uh, maybe put a 24 to 105 on there. Maybe a 2.8 lens, maybe a faster lens to get it better image quality. But at the end of the day, it's nice and compact when it comes to the lenses and most of the crop frame lenses that you can use with it because the sensor is not that big. So you can get it probably in less compromising places. It's also one of the best weather sealed cameras Canon has ever made, especially at a price of like $1,600 when it came out. So the 7D Mark I is one of the best cameras for things that you wouldn't think to use it. 
because it's a doable camera. I remember Kai, when he was at Digital Rail, set the thing on fire and it still kept firing. So you have to understand, what do you want to do with the work that's coming from the 7D? You see what I'm saying? Do you want to do fast action work? And if you already have a more advanced camera, you can use it as a B cam, a C cam. Put it in a compromising situation. Strap it to a car, put it on a gimbal, and put the gimbal on a car. Pre-focus it because it doesn't have dual pixel autofocus if you're doing video. But also, you can take pictures wirelessly. Eight frames a second, probably. See what I'm saying? Wireless pictures, eight frames a second. Put it on a drone. Remote shutter it. Take pictures. You see what I'm saying? Because if it gets damaged, you're not as concerned about the 70 Mark I because it's a cheaper body. Think constructively. Don't think about buying the next greatest, latest thing. I know I love talking about the R5 and the R5 Mark II that might come out soon. The R1 that probably is going to come out soon. But at the end of the day, guys, do what you can to get a shot that nobody's ever seen. I'm Devin with Century FX Studio. Thanks, user, for uh, messaging my, uh, my, my, my video. I appreciate it. I love the fact that so many people have loved this 7D and 2023 video. Utilizing an older camera to save money, time, and effort. Stay tuned for the next video and affiliate links below.